All right, I want to just finish off this problem showing you how to find the rates of change in the population at various points in time. Uh, there's a harder way and an easier way to do this, and I just want to make sure you can see the easier way as well as the more interesting, uh, the harder way. So to find dp dt when t equals five weeks, and when t equals 25 weeks. Okay, this is our goal. Now, to do this, we could do it one of two ways. Um, if we want to use dpdt, the formula we have up there, note that we don't have that in terms of time. But we have it in terms of the population. So if we know the population at t equals 5 weeks, which we happen to know this time for five weeks. Uh, we can plug that in to find dpdt. Uh, so in this case, we actually know that one. Uh, dpdt for t equals five weeks uh, is going to be equal to 0.16219 times the population. Do you remember what the population is in five weeks? Yep, 200 fish. So we're going to plug 200 in for our population P here, right? So we have times 200 times 1 minus 200 over 1,000. All right, so all we have to do here is multiply these together. So we pull out our calculator and, and do this. Uh, 0.16219 times 200 times parenthesis 1 minus 200 over 1,000, that's 1 fifth, or 0.2, gives us 25.95. And the units on this would be, well, let's see, it's dpdt. So dpp is in fish, t is in weeks, so this would be per week. 25.95 fish per week. About 26 fish per week is the rate of change at five weeks. All right, so that's, uh, of course, one approach. Uh, another approach would be to use P of T and find its derivative. I'm having you do that on this homework assignment. So you need to actually find the derivative of this function of T and find your rate of change in the population at a certain time using that approach. It should give you the same result. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the calculator and see how we can get through this a little bit more efficiently because we won't always know the population imme immediately at the time we want. Like at the 25 weeks, we will need to calculate that population using our model down here, right? So what we want to do is use our calculator. All right, so here on the calculator, we've got um, the differential equation on top in Y1 and the population model in Y2. So what we're going to do is, in order to make this work easily in the table, we're going to change the y here on the differential equation to an x. But we've got to know that it represents the population. Or we're going to get ourselves confused. Okay, so that in y1, this is the differential equation, and the input is the population p. Uh, for y2, the input here that's still stated in terms of x is what? Yeah, the time. Okay, so what we want to do now is go to the table. Second graph gives us the table, and we now get to put some values in for x. Now, let's just try out the first one. So when t was 5 weeks, we're going to put 5 in for x, and we know that that will give us in y2, x was representing time, so we get the 200 fish for our population. So that was where we got this first statement here, p of 5 is 200, or where we could have gotten it if we didn't already know that one. Now, y1 is not meaningful to us right now. It would be the rate of change in the population when the population was five fish, which isn't really what we want to find out here. So if we want to find out using the calculator's approach here what the rate of change would be, uh, we now put 200 in. Now being the input to y1 as the population, pressing enter, we get 25.95 fish per week, which is what we came up with. Now the 1,000 over there in Y2 is saying if we had waited 200 weeks, we'd be at our carrying capacity of 1,000 fish, which is not related to what we want to know this time. Now the other piece of information that we want to find out here is uh, what is dpdt 
when t equals 25 weeks. OK, maybe I should put in an abbreviated weeks there. Well, in order to find that out, we want to know what the population is after 25 weeks. So we've got p of 25. Uh, of course, we could plug it into our formula here. It wouldn't be that hard. Um, 1,000 over 1 plus 9e e to the negative 0 0.16219 times 25. OK, but we already have this formula in our calculator, so we're going to use that to evaluate here. So we see that uh, when we put in 25, press Enter, we get on the right, Y2 is our 865.01 fish. That's our population. So we're going to come over here, and we'll just go to the nearest fish here. So 865 fish is our population after 25 weeks. We've not reached our maximum carrying capacity yet, but we have gotten quite a ways up there. OK, so we plug the 865 into our differential equation, dpdt, and we have 0.16219 times our population of 865 fish times 1 minus 865 over 1,000. OK, well, let's go ahead and plug it into our calculator here, see what we get. We put 865 fish in. Uh, y1, again, represents our rate of change. Y2, of course, after 865 weeks, we're still at our carrying capacity. That's not interesting. But the 18.94 here is interesting. This would be our rate of change after 25 weeks, 18.94 fish per week. OK, so we found our rates of change this way. Uh, what you'll be doing on the exploration lab that you're doing here would be also to find p prime of t using this model. So we'd find uh, p prime of t by just taking the derivative of this um, as you would normally do. Okay, you could bring the bottom part to the top, use the chain rule, uh, or you could use the quotient rule, I suppose, and, and treat it that way. But either way, you're going to find the derivative of p of t that way and verify that you get the same results as we did with this approach using the calculator and tricking it a little bit to uh, know which is which in terms of our input and our output. Okay, let me know if you have questions on this. I might uh, quickly look at this again on Wednesday, but probably refer you to this video. So I hope that this has been clear.